Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, and today we are going to do an install of SharePoint Server 2016 Enterprise using the 180 day trial key. Woohoo! Alright, this is video number four in our series. Um, in vi video number one, we built out these uh, Hyper-V servers you see here. We created a new domain, joined them all to one domain, so we have a nice uh, work like environment. Video two, we learned about Hyper-V snapshots because, let's face it, uh, I make mistakes and it's easy to be able to revert back to those previous snapshots. So I take a lot of snapshots, gives me lots of chances to make these videos without looking like a dummy. Um, in video three, we actually did an A and a B version of video three. In the uh, A version, we installed SQL Server 2014 Service Pack 1. And then in the B version, we reverted back to snapshot and we created a new tree, which is the uh, SQL 2016 installs. Um, in reality, right, SharePoint's not going to care about what version of SQL we chose. So um, for going forward, it doesn't matter whether you chose A or B, but I want to break those out because I know some people like to see, uh, you know, the specific one they want to do, not just uh, almost the same type of setup. So that's what we did. All right, cool. Anyway, that's how we got here. So let's jump in and figure out what's going on with our environment. Okay, so if we look at our server here, uh, we've got our three VMs up, and the first thing I want to do actually is I'm going to log over here into the SharePoint box. So we'll log in as Shane's Cal's administrator, and we know that's our super secret password that we always use. And I'm actually going to flip over to the domain controller as well. I'm going to log into that one. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, log in the domain controller, and we're going to create a new account. So one of the things that we're really going to harp on as we go through this series is doing least privileged uh, things for SharePoint as much as possible. And so the very first step of that actually for me is not to use a domain administrator account over here um, to install SharePoint, but instead to create a SharePoint specific account that we can log into. So to do that, I need um, the domain controller over here to catch up so I can open up uh, domain tools, right? So we'll go to tools and we will click patiently and we will choose Active Directory Users and Computers. And now that that's come up, I will make sure that we're in the Users OU, and then we will go here and say create a new user in the current container. And for this one we're going to call it SharePoint Install. Um, and so for the user login name we'll do SP underscore install. In the past, uh, if you've ever taken any of my other training, I used to use SP Admin it doesn't matter, you can name it SP, SP Bob for as far as I'm concerned, but for today we chose SP install. So we'll say next, we will use our same super secret password, and once again because this is a test environment, right, everything's going to expire, expire in about 180 days, we're going to just say, you know what, now the password and that's going to change, so next, and finish. So now we have a new account, right, SharePoint install, so then I'm going to switch over to my SharePoint server, right, so SharePoint server, and on this one I'm going to go to Tools and Computer Management, and what we're going to do here is we're going to go to uh, Local Users and Groups, Groups, Administrators, and we're going to add SP underscore install, there's our new account, as a local administrator. So that's the only permission that this account needs to do all the install pieces for SharePoint. So we're going to um, use that account for all the install and admin -y work on SharePoint going forward and the only special permission it needs is local administrator on all of the SharePoint boxes so there it's set up so we'll close that, we'll close that, we'll click the start button we'll click on administrator and we will sign out and so now we'll log in again we'll say other user and here we'll do SP install and pass that word one and so there you go. So now moving forward, everything we do on this VM is going to be done as SP install, not as uh, the domain administrator. So once again, just creating that more of a secure environment. Um, and I just think it's a really helpful type of thing for us to do to keep ourselves out of trouble. So we've went ahead and set that up. All right, so that's done. Uh, we'll go back to the domain controller. We'll just close out of all this stuff. And we're actually going to be done with him for now. And the remainder of the video will be over here on this SharePoint box. So we'll close out of here. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the 180 day trial of SharePoint Server. So thanks to the magic of the internet, I'm gonna say start, open up Internet Explorer. And uh, we're gonna 
we get all the prompts right because we logged in for the first time. So do you want to use the recommended settings? That sounds great. I'm not really going to be doing any internet browsing from this machine anyway. Uh, protected mode is turned off. Remember we did that way back in video one. Uh, we're going to say go ahead and don't show this message again. Uh, click don't show this message again. There we go. And then, uh, you know, we can get our free copy of Windows 10, which is awkward since we're on Windows Server 2012 already. All right. So I'm going to go to Bing because, as we've discussed multiple times, I am a Bing user. And we're going to go to the TechNet Evaluation Center. If you've done the other videos, you are very familiar with what was about to happen. What's odd, though, is <laughs> TechNet Evaluation Center shows up as the second link, not the first one. What do you do? I'm certain some of you are making fun of me using for Bing right now. All right, and so then here I'm going to do a search for SharePoint. And right there at the top, SharePoint Server 2016 180 day eval. Perfect. We'll click on that. It'll load a new page. And so then now you'd go through that same process, right? You need to sign in the first time you sign in. Um, it's going to prompt you for some information about you. They just you know, want to know, hey, can I spam you, for example, and you know, just some demographic stuff so they know who's downloading it. And so far from downloading the trial, I've only gotten one email that said, hey, here's some getting started stuff. Pretty useful information, actually, so don't be afraid of it. All right, um, and then the other thing to keep in mind while you're doing this is under the pre-install information, here's the key. This, this took me a minute to find last time. It was like, where happened to my key? It turns out that it was uh, right here. I was expecting it to show up an email or show up as part of the download. So you will need to capture the key. Uh, and it is the same for all of us, so you guys aren't getting anything by uh, seeing my key. So, All right. So did the, ins or did the download. If we look here on my C drive under install, you will see that I got a office server.img file. Um, you know, three gigs. Didn't think you wanted to watch that happen, so I went ahead and uh, pulled that down. And so what I'm going to do now is uh, you can double click on the file and then it will just automatically map that as an E drive, right? So if we go back to this PC, now you'll see that the E drive has that particular version of SharePoint downloaded and installed. Or not, not installed, but downloaded for us. Good? That's what we wanted. All right. So, and then I also, because I am a terrible typer in this install folder, um, I put a key file, right? And so um, there, I'll be able to get the keys uh, a little bit. So we'll minimize that. We will uh, close Internet Explorer because we don't want to waste any of our resources. And then we're going to navigate back to this PC and the E drive. And so then I'm going to go down here and the next step is to, we need to put some prerequisites down for SharePoint. So to do that, we're going to run the prerequisite installer. It needs to run as an administrator, so yes. So thumbs up there. So it says, hey, here's all the things I want to put on your server. So that's great. We want all those things on our server. So we're going to say next. We're going to read all these license terms. Looks good to me. Say I accept. And next again. And so now this is going to start uh, putting the prerequisites on your machine. So we're not going to sit through the whole thing here, but while this starts running, I want to talk through a couple things. So one is the prerequisite installer, um, it is going out to the internet and downloading the different pieces. Uh, it's also, this is putting the IIS, the, the .NET 3.5, all that, all those pieces on our machine for us um, and configuring them appropriately for SharePoint. So it's very nice of SharePoint. Um, if you do, as you're running these, get any type of error message. Uh, they do have a pretty good log. You can usually flip through there probably nine times out of ten because it can't find the internet. Um, so if you have a server who isn't allowed to access the internet, it is possible to uh, download all of these files ahead of time and put them in a folder and then run the prerequisite installer um, and tell it to use the local copies. So that is a possibility if you have that type of scenario. The other time that you might want to do that is if you have a lot of servers, you know, because this is pulling all this stuff from the internet and it does take a little bit. So if you had to do a 10 server SharePoint farm or something, you might be easier, better off just bring them all down at once and then write yourself a little script that says, here's the, uh, you know, the big long, I mean, the command line ends up being this long um, of how to file all the way through those. So I would recommend you look at that. Um, even if you do all the prerequisites in any type of funky way, I always recommend that you go ahead and run the prereq installer and get it to say successful at the end. 
right? Because if the things are already installed, so if IIS was already configured and all those SQL tools and all those things that already been downloaded, it would just quickly skip over them and be like, yep, that's there, that's there, that's there, that's there, and then say uh, success at the end. And so you always feel a little better about going to the next step if you can see that success. So I highly recommend you run the prereq tool at the end just to see it say, yes, everything is truly there the way it expected. Uh, keeps you out of trouble. Uh, so you also find out that nine times out of ten this reboots. Not even nine times. It's, it's 100% these days. Uh, I haven't had it not reboot. So we'll anticipate once this finishes a reboot happening as well. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause and then we will start back up when this gets to the point where it wants to restart. I'll talk while it restarts and then we'll let it run again. We'll pause, etc., etc. All right. So I will see you guys in a second. Okay. So the tool finished its first pass. You can see, hey, it wants to restart to kind of keep going. So no problem. We're just going to hit finish. And the nice thing about this is it will, it's going to shut itself down. It's going to reboot. And then we'll log back in for it. And once we log back in, it'll actually fire the tool right back up itself and keep going. So not a lot for us to do. Just wanted to kind of make sure that if you're following along at home, you didn't get any surprises like, oh, what do I do? What happens? Yeah, just hit reboot and hope that it goes pretty fast when it reboots because in reality, I'm just trying to kill time to avoid another pause. All right, I cheated. I did pause. Um, so we'll hit control alt delete here. And so we're just going to log in, right? Still a SharePoint install. So pass at word one. Um, and just for reference, the previous pause, it took about five minutes. So it was about five minutes of cutout video there. Uh, if you're just wondering how long your install should take. All right, logging back in here. And what will happen as soon as the Windows catches up is that it will start up the prereq installer. But it's like, hey, I can't find the file specified. Oh no, what do I do? No problem. So that what happened was because we um, mounted that virtual drive for the E, right? It was just a temporary mount. So we just need to mount that up again. So we're going to go over to C and then install. We're going to double click on Office Server again. So now it puts it back at the E. And so the good thing here is we can just do the prerequisite installer manually. So yes. And it says, hey, I'm going to put all this stuff on. We'll read the license again. Next. Now, in reality, right, we already talked about this, but what's going to happen is it's going to see that all these pieces are already there, so it should zip through pretty quick. Uh, the .NET stuff has got a, more, a little more configured, so this one takes a minute. But all those other updates that it put on, uh, it'll just say, oh, they're there, they're there, they're there, and uh, move right along. So this goes back to that advice. You can run prerequisite installer early and often. It doesn't hurt to just keep running it, and it doesn't take very long to run it over and over again because, in reality, as long as the stuff's there, it's just doing a check and giving it a thumbs up. All right, we'll hit pause again, and I'll be back in a second. All right, in reality, that pause wasn't necessary. By the time I hit pause, <laughs> installation complete came up. You know, SharePoint should do a better job of telling me when to pause it and when not to. Oh, well. Anyway, so you can see it finished. If you scrolled through the list, you could actually see that, you know, no action was taken, no action was taken. No action was taken because it was already installed. So we're good. Yay. So we'll finish up. Uh, I'll go ahead and close Server Manager. And so now we have all our prereqs on. Uh, this brings us to the last step, and that's going to be to run our friend setup. So we'll double click on setup. Yes. And while that's starting to open, I will navigate back over to my PC, the C drive, install. And remember last time we talked about, um, I put the key here to just avoid this type of scenario. So we'll grab that and we'll copy it because in just a moment, SharePoint should open up. Close that. Close that. Okay, that uh, finished up there. So now we'll go to the spot here. We'll paste in our key. It says, yay, your key is correct. And we'll say continue. Once again, I'll remind you guys to read all of those license terms. Oh, yep, yep, I agree with that. Oh, mm -hmm, yep, that's a good idea. And so I'll say accept. And we will hit continue. All right, so now it says, hey, where do you want to put your files? Um, 
I'm going to be honest, usually I leave uh, both of these the defaults. It just makes things, troubleshooting, hunting stuff down easier. Now the first one, this is just wherever you put your all your other program files. So if you have a standard in your domain that you like to put them on, by all means change it. I don't really care. Um, the second one it says, hey, if this becomes an index server or you know a query server, where are we going to store all those files? Now, the C drive is a really bad idea for that, especially in production, right? Where you're going to end up with hopefully terabytes of data inside a SharePoint, and so you end up with giant hundreds of gigs, if not terabytes, of index files when it's all said and done. Probably don't have that much space on your C drive. Hopefully, you do follow the best practices. I do like to see your C drives at at least 100 gigs um, for a production server, but the reason I don't get too hung up with this setting, this is just saying where's the default location. When I set up the search indexes and the query stuff, I can specify then where I want it. And so what I generally find is I'm a little more well, a little more equipped at that point to say, oh yeah, I want to create and attach a new volume, the F drive, and I'm going to put them on the F drive or any of that type of stuff. So if you know ahead of time you want to go ahead and move your default location for indexes to that other drive where you're going to put them, that's great. Um, like I said, I usually end up with the defaults, and then when I create the search service applications, um, I configure everything then. But either works. If you're afraid you're going to default to the defaults and get yourself in trouble later, then by all means, if you have the additional drive, go ahead and do that. All right. So anyway, we're good here. So I'm going to say install now. And so now it's going to be off to the races. As you've probably guessed, we're going to hit pause so you don't have to sit here and listen to me make small talk while this runs. So um, I will see you in a second. Okay, so now we're brought to the screen Run Configuration Wizard. So that means setup is completed. We had no errors, so that's a great sign. Um, and really, so all of the bits for you know SharePoint, all the bits and the bytes, EXEs and all that fun stuff has now been laid down on top of the server. So it's ready for us to actually go in and um, start to create a real live farm. But before we can do that, uh, there's a few more things we want to do. So we actually don't want to just jump right in here and run the configuration wizard. So we're going to deselect this box and then we're going to hit close. And so then that'll complete this video, right? So now it's installed. So the next video in the series, I'm going to talk about installing updates. Um, because when you install a cumulative update, one of the things you have to do is you have to run all the configuration wizards afterwards to kind of sync those all the way into the farm, really apply those. And so we're going to look at the different cumulative updates that are out there. We'll evaluate them. And we'll go ahead and put one of those on in the next um, video so you can see it. So that way when we run Configuration Wizard for the first time, it'll just be there and we'll be like, yay! I started SharePoint at a patched level instead of having to build it all out and then patching it after the fact. All right, so that takes care of us on this video. Um, as always, my name is Shane Young. You can reach me out on um, Twitter, at Shane's Cows. Or we can always work together if you just hit up www.boldzebras.com. And then, of course, if you like this video and you want to see more like this, definitely subscribe to the channel and uh, leave any comments. So I use the comments to kind of figure out what videos I do next. You know, I've got that's where I get the suggestions for things like the PowerShell uh, that I'll do a little bit later and some of the Azure stuff. So always use the comments as a great way just to provide the feedback of what you'd like to see different in the upcoming videos. Okay, thanks and have a great day.